Hey there gang, welcome back to the big board. I'm going to do a quick look at Ukraine Crisis uh, from Hollandspiel Games. It's a Brian Train design and I thought after playing this one that it was worth having a chat about because it uh, it probably encapsulates a lot of the things that uh, are, are you know who Brian Train is and and what what he does as a game designer. So I thought that might be <clears throat> worth having a look at if you are ever thinking about buying one of his games. Uh, perhaps use this as a as a guidepost to try and uh, ascertain whether it's right for you or not. So I'm probably not going to stick too much to that AAR guidelines that I posted. I, I may bounce around that a little bit, but. Anyway, before we get into that, let's talk a little bit about, about uh, my, some of my experiences with Brian Train games. They fall into a fairly broad spectrum of reactions uh, from, uh, wow, this is fascinating. This is, uh, wow, this is fascinating and good. Wow, this is fascinating and bad. And wow, this is fascinating and what the freaking heck were you thinking when you built this thing. Now, that gamut of, uh, of experiences is in part, obviously, you got to put the filter on that it's me playing the game. And sometimes it's me only playing the game once or maybe twice. And sometimes when you play a game one time, particularly the way some rule books are written, you may not get the game or understand or grok the game the way it was intended to be played. So fully appreciate that that can happen. For me, I find if that is the case, then shame on the designer for not making the game more readily apparent to the person who's trying to play it. So <clears throat> what, what, what do I mean by, mean by that when I talk about, uh, when I talk about the Ukraine crisis in particular? So Many of his, many of Brian Train's designs are asymmetrical in nature. They are often highly abstracted and they tend to try and bring both strategic and tactical elements together. They try and bring geopolitical factors into a somewhat uh, operational slash tactical scale. And it's a very complicated effort to try and bring all that stuff together. And A Distant Plane from the Coin series by GMT Games is probably a classic example of that, and that would be a highly well-refined geopolitical counterinsurgency game that is really more there. It's more of a resource management game than it is a war game like this is. This, to me, is a enough of a war game, enough of a conflict simulation, if for want of a better term, than, uh, than, than the coin series, for instance, is to me. So, uh, train, so, so that's, that's kind of the, the underlying premise of m most, m I will say all of the games that I've played of his, I have played several, but not all. Uh, he's a prolific designer and a great producer and, and comes out with some pretty interesting stuff. So, so let's have a look at this and talk about this game. What this game is trying to do, uh, and I believe it was de designed over a weekend. So it's probably bringing together lots of experience and taking a framework of uh, effort that has gone on in the past. Uh, you know, there's probably the tracks have been used before in this particular way in terms of managing whether, you know, prestige or political will or uh, whatever the case may be, uh, you know, the geopolitical value of a particular uh, country and its influence in terms of whether it's neutral, supporting or intervening, uh, all those types of things. And then combat, uh, very straightforward, abstracted combat concepts where you're basically taking, you know, eight dice here versus three dice here fives and sixes are going to give hits but depending on the type of uh, physical engagement you decide to get into and depending on the types of units that are fighting regular versus irregular right so this isn't a regular unit this is a regular unit uh, de and depending on the ratio of those forces it's going to drive the type of combat you're allowed to have uh, so some combats might be what they call symbolic and others might be kinetic 
and uh, they may be asymmetrical or or excess uh, or asymmetrical as well, right? So kinetic, you're trying to neutralize or kill units. Uh, symbolic, you're uh, you're you're inflicting hits upon the units, but that's going to generate that's going to generate political will a degradation for one or both sides. At that's at the combat level. At the at the actual heart of the game, and again this is a nine turn game. At the heart of the game is this concept of the strategy turn, and the strategy turn. Uh, begins with, uh, well, all turns begin, but uh, strategy turn in particular begins with um, uh, these cards. So you pull a card and you play a card or hold it and play it at a, at a given time. It's not necessarily 100% certain when you're allowed to play the cards, but let's just say that you play the card uh, when you draw it or you hold it in your hand and you use it at some point in time. <clears throat> um, so you'll play, you'll draw these cards, then you'll allocate your... Um, well, you may allocate these first, actually, but it doesn't matter. Uh, you know, the, allocate these levels of effort, maximum effort, uh, minor effort, and moderate effort, to both information, diplomatic, and military themes. And those themes are going to drive political will. They're going to drive the diplomatic uh, escalations and de-escalations here. Uh, the information is going to move political will up and down and you have different means of moving that up and down. Some things will cost you political will, uh, uh, but also cost your, your uh, opponents more political will. Uh, some things will allow, some elements will allow you to uh, just increase your political will. So pretty, uh, pretty straightforward sort of diplomatic abstraction there. Uh, you, you're also uh, with this political will business. You're trying to sorry that was information with the diplomatic. You're trying to move guys up and down from neutral to support to intervention, and you're rolling for resource points based on the level of effort. And once you make that roll, you can add pol uh, political will points to improve your chances of moving the U.S. to intervention, for instance, as the case might be. So this is a seesawing action that uh, you'll see these guys move up and down based on what diplomatic choices are made here. And the military side, same thing. We're rolling for the number of resource, resource points. We want to move units out of the reserve boxes into the mobilized boxes. Uh, and then we want to move units from the mobilized boxes onto the map such that we can capture these areas and garner the victory points for the game. And that really, that's the game right there, right? Sounds pretty straightforward. The trick, or well, the trick, the, the, the richness and the nuance in this comes from the interplay between your prestige points that you're, you start with. So the Soviets are going to start with uh, something in the 30 range or 25 range or something like that. And the poor old Ukrainians start with, I don't know, uh, 10 or 15 or something like that. So almost double, double the difference here. And uh, of course, being the Russian, I keep saying Soviets, but being the Russian player, it's uh, very easy to consume a lot of these points early in the game uh, in these strategy turns as you try and get, uh, prevent a diplomatic support, uh, so international support for the Ukraine. You want to prevent that from happening. You also want to make sure that you try, you can try and drive, if you can drive this quickly, this prestige level of the Ukrainians down to zero quickly, you can get a quick win, uh, which is one of the things that the, the Russians tried to do at the outset, and they used up a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, prestige their international prestige, their, percept, their perceived uh, power in the world stage. And so they, they consumed a lot of that early. And then uh, when, that didn't, when that didn't transpose or trans, uh, uh, transform this into a winning strategy, these guys ended up down here somewhere. But at the same time, the, uh, the Ukrainians doubled down on maximum effort for the diplomatic uh, corps and pushed enough units from the neutral up into support that at the uh, there's a, a couple of phases in here where you 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 garner uh, polit prestige points from whoever's sitting in this support bucket or in the intervention bucket so these guys shot up in points these guys shot down in points and we had a reversal of roles uh, at turn four or turn five 
which uh, caused problems for the Russians. Russians then went on a very highly militaristic uh, bent, put maximum effort into that, and started trying to get irregular units and special forces units into the field uh, in key areas to try and gobble up uh, victory points in these locations. At some point, uh, turn six, we were forced into a combat situation. And as we uh, sadly discovered as the Russians, combat is going to cost you, uh, almost regardless of how you play it, it's going to cost you political will. The more successful you are with your combat, the lower your political, your sorry, your prestige uh, I keep saying political will, but your prestige drops as you are more and more successful with the level of carnage you're inflicting upon your enemy, which makes perfect sense, right? And uh, the uh, same obviously occurred for, for these fellas as well, for the Ukrainians, but they were a lot less uh, inclined to be as aggressive as they probably could have. So <clears throat> all in all, the game uh, flowed very, very quickly. It's a very easy to play a game. Probably not 100% on the wording and the rules. There's a couple of areas where there's some duplication. There's areas where you're, you're reading a, a rule and you go, oh, I didn't realize that, that I was going to get that or could have that or have, a, have access to that. There's this really nice uh, Ukrainian crisis. Let me hold this up a little bit here. Uh, Ukrainian crisis sequence of play and uh, you know you've really got to just got to pay attention to the sequence of play there were there was rules in it I didn't realize that this is was as details detailed as it was but there were rules in the rule book that uh, summarized here that would have made life a lot easier for me uh, and here's your uh, effort chart you the more effort you put in here the more resource points you get which allow you to uh, impact the map uh, and uh, there's critical incidents when you roll doubles. Uh, the very first turn we rolled doubles and uh, had a detente, which immediately ended the turn. Uh, I immediately got very nervous about how this game was going to play out. Uh, needless to say, I'm going to try and keep this relatively brief here. We're at 12 minutes already. Uh, this is a quite rich game in terms of the choice matrices that are given to you based on the oh, scrunch, scrunch, scrunch. Sorry about the rough, the rough treatment of the camera there. Uh, let me see if I can get this to sit still. There we go. Got a little, come on fella, there we go. The tripod's playing up. <clears throat> Maybe the user is being inefficient, I don't know. But uh, this, this is the game right here, right? Intervention, diplomacy, and military action. You're, you're doing that for two or three or two or three turns, potentially, maybe even more, uh, to try and sway things or get things into a position where you're ready to make this combat, uh, to declare a combat turn and drive for the, the winning strategy, whatever that winning strategy may be. Uh, it's an interest so it's a very interesting the way these all interplay uh if i if i go too hard on my information gathering and information utilization i'm going to mess up uh my potentially mess up my uh prestige points over here if i uh play hard in the diplomatic game i need to you know i need to drive these guys all towards intervention well, that's going to force a, a military reaction potentially, or it's going to force the Soviet player to try and move these guys back down. We had lots of to and fro going on here. I found that to be very, very interesting. And then, of course, the military side of things, it's almost a... Uh, you're going to get to a combat situation, but as you do, you realize that it's probably the least attractive of your options. But at some point, you have to... As the Russian or the Ukrainian, you're going to have to try and capture some of these stronger areas and, uh, and boost up your VP total. Uh, the game is won by a uh, total number of prestige points plus victory, uh, victory points uh, that for areas that you control. And there were no active units. If a unit's flipped over, it's inactive or neutralized. And SF units don't count. So this would be 
this area would be controlled by uh, the Ukrainians. This area would be controlled by the uh, Russians. So a very, very interesting game. Pulls a lot of different threads together. It's a pretty clean package. The map is lovely. I, I, it's lo I'll say it's lovely to the extent that these boxes needed to be bigger so everybody could fit in here for a start. Uh, same goes for the, the reserve mobilized situation here. You know, either make the map a little wider or change the location of these boxes. And, and, and uh, you know, there's a lot of extra space here with this, you know, the, the Russian land and Belarus here and whatnot. I think we could have, we could have had a, a slightly more user-friendly interface here. Obviously, the boxes need to be, these boxes need to be this big because they're the size of the counters. As you can see, these are all used we used all these. Once you use these uh, maximum effort, minimum effort things, there's enough for nine turns. Once you've used them all, they, they go in a pile over here. But all these guys were also available to be, you know, they're in the reserve box here and these guys are in the reserve box here. There's a lot of counters on the map. Uh, and these were the residual here left left to be played of the resource uh, the resource markers. So it's a, it gets to be a little bit busy. It would be nice to perhaps see a, a slightly larger map. I understand the Hollandspiel has its uh, its printing limitations, so there is it is what it is. I thought the artwork was great on it. Uh, nice color combinations and all that sort of fun stuff, and everything was pretty clear to read. It'd be nice to have all this writing oriented the same way as well. Uh, but there you have it. Okay, that's uh, my quick little uh, summation or look at the Ukrainian crisis. There is another title in the box. It's uh, something to do with uh, a border skirmish on uh, in 1939 um, between uh, when Hungarians invaded uh, Slovakia or something like that. So uh, have not had a look at it and will probably not be looking at it in the immediate short term. I'm, I'm probably going to play this again. Uh, it's a fascinating little game. All right. Look forward to talking also. Ciao.